Trump is racist. Healthcare should be nationalized. This economy is actually the work of Obama, blah, blah, not my president. These are all things you're going to hear this Thursday, so I hope you're ready to defend against them because on the holiday that was designed to bring people together over good food, why not just wedge political discourse in between familial bonds? John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Ahoy there. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe down below right now because if you do, I will shout you out at my Thanksgiving dinner as someone that I am thankful for. Probably not, but still. Okay, so if you're watching this video right now, you're probably at least relatively into political issues, which means that your family is also probably relatively into political issues. And unless you guys are sitting there looking like a Norman Rockwell painting, there's going to be some arguments this Thursday. And today we're going to break down what they are likely going to be and how to rebut against them. 538 took the liberty of compiling this data for us in 2014 and again in 2017. And it's interesting to see how the likelihood of the different arguments has changed since then. But anyways, Trump is the most likely topic, so let's just get into it. Firstly, President Trump, I found an article on blackenterprise.com which seems to be about right as far as the level of intelligence of these arguments against Trump tends to be. So here's the first one as to why Trump is not fit to be president. This actually comes from Michael Moore, I think, the list. One, nothing including an arcane racist section of the Constitution can change the fact that more than three million Americans voted more for Hillary than for Trump. It's either a democracy or it isn't. If he had won by three million, I'd sadly admit that Trump is the president the American people wanted, but that's not what happened. Okay, Trump's not actually the president because Hillary had three million more votes. I actually had to dig out a really old source for this one. Um, I doubt Michael Moore will think it's credible, but it's called the Constitution of the United States. And according to it, the president is not elected by the people. The president is elected via the votes of the Electoral College, which in 48 states and DC are the same as whichever way the popular vote in that state goes. So no, our election isn't directly decided by the voters as a result of intentional design by the founders as a compromise between a popular vote and an election through Congress. He then says, well, it's either democracy or isn't. It isn't, it never was, that's intentional. Glad we could clear that up for you. Oh, as it would turn out, Trump actually received more electoral votes than Hillary did, so he is indeed the president, which is likely why he lives in the White House right now, and Hillary is still going on book tours. Second one, he's not well and needs help. He has a number of serious mental disorders that make him unfit to hold office, and they are on display every day in cringeworthy tweets. After another, he's full-blown, malignant narcissist, he's a sociopath. He'll say one thing, and 30 seconds later, he's the opposite. Disconnected from the truth, stunning lack of human empathy, these behaviors make him a truly dangerous occupant of the Oval Office. Okay, so Trump has mental disorders, and we know this because of his tweets. Michael Moore's not a psychologist, and he's provided no actual evidence of this diagnosis. Also, it was so stupid how they ran articles like, we're psychiatrists. It's our duty to question the president's mental state. Like, that, that's cute. First of all, because your science is so subjective and malleable, you can't even successfully replicate your own experiments half the time. I'm glad you guys feel like heroes. Whoever says that, like, you know who the real heroes are? Psychologists. Psychologists, man, they're the real heroes. And they even wrote a book about this, and uh, they're disregarding the fact that they're violating the Goldwater Rule of the American Psychiatric Association that says, hey, you can't just diagnose public figures that you have no clinical information on for the sake of virtue signaling, but they'll do it anyways because they're scientists. Have you ever talked to a psychology major? Like, they're all like this. They say that they can diagnose people with a textbook definition because it's such a hard, irrefutable science. Psychology, by the way, is actually one of the most important fields within the social sciences and humanities. The problem is this... It's just become entirely corrupt by people like this. Anyways, next one. The Russians interfered with the election in order to get him elected. Even Trump now admits as much. That alone makes this election tainted and should be voided. No, nope, Russians didn't cast the votes. We did. And the argument is that, well, the Russians hacked the DNC and leaked the emails, which made people mad at the Democrats. So then they voted for Trump. All right, so let's get this one straightened out. Some Romanian hackers that are linked to Putin hacked into the DNC and exposed that Obama knew about Clinton using a private server and putting our national security at risk, that Clinton was going to escalate tensions in Korea by staging missile defense systems, that Clinton mocked Catholics, that she has both a public and a private persona, that she was fed debate questions by Donna Brazil, that she had dreams of open borders, that they were going to use a consulting firm to raise money for the Clinton Global Initiative to supplement Bill Clinton's personal income, and that they conspired to turn people against Bernie Sanders, your precious old Northeastern socialist, and you're mad at the Russians? You are literally more upset that the information got out than you are that the information is even true. That is unbelievable to me. That is absolutely unbelievable. I can't imagine being that possessed by an ideology, but you can't call it collusion because Trump had no idea that this was going to happen. And we know this because 
Um, there's literally no evidence, virtually none, zero, that suggests that he did. So good luck with that special counsel that you've been going on about for like, what, two years? And have you seen the way they talk about Mueller? They're, they think he's this genius ace in the hole that's just compiling thousands of charges against the entire Trump crime family. Like, all right, well, good luck with that. Trump went after the guys, by the way, that Mueller indicted, those 13 guys that were part of the Troll Factory LLC. Yeah, they got hit with sanctions. Also, why do you think Putin wanted Trump to win? If I were a betting man, I would say the smart money is on Trump saying, hey, be friends with Russians, since that sounds more appealing than Clinton being widely known for having aggressive military policies that would have escalated tensions between not only the United States and Russia, but also a handful of other countries in the Middle East. Next, the FBI clearly chose sides, and Director Comey interference 10 days before the election most definitely helped and tipped the balance. The FBI preferred candidate Donald J. Trump, that our own federal police would so brazenly attempt to throw the election as uh, least votes, mind-boggling, frightening, and it's got to be stopped. I should have mentioned this earlier, but after the emails were leaked and after the FBI opened the investigation again in October, her poll numbers dropped a couple points, but she was never less than three or four points ahead of Trump. She was ahead of Trump for that entire election, except for like once in July where Trump was up by one or two points. So the idea that what cost her the election, uh, that's a stretch. I mean, besides the majority of polls for the entire election were completely off or maybe lying, probably a healthy mixture of both, but people knew about her corruption beforehand. It was very public. People that knew about that were not on the fence as evidenced by your outrage over the Romanian hackers. No one who was going to vote for Hillary decided not to because of those revelations. She still has been drowning in scandals ever since she's been in the public eye. Give me a break. Michael Moore thinks that the FBI had a bias, and I agree. The FBI was very biased against Trump. How do we know this? Well, we had Peter Stork, or whatever his name is, who was helping to lead the investigation into the Trump-Russia collusion, sending anti-Trump texts referencing how they ought to go easy on Clinton since they were so sure of her victory. And why is it that the FBI discovering new emails that were pertinent to the investigation mean that they're biased in favor of Trump? Doesn't that just, I don't know, maybe they're doing their jobs? And if you have an issue with that, it's probably because in order for them to do their jobs, they have to investigate a candidate who is completely corrupt, which also just so happens to be your candidate. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Trump has nominated Rex Tillerson, the most powerful corporate CEO in the world, as our Secretary of State. Why would the quarter billionaire, head of the world's richest corporation, want a government job? So that he, a personal friend of Putin's, can get the U.S. sanctions lifted off Russia. So that the, his company can get back to their exclusive oil deal, which will eventually get him $3 trillion. Okay, so Trump likes Tillerson, likes Putin, likes Tillerson. And they're going to remove the sanctions so Tillerson gets a bunch of money because Tillerson likes money. That sounds corrupt. Let's investigate that. Okay, so apparently we've actually extended our, and added more sanctions on Russia, and it looks like Tillerson isn't even Secretary of State anymore because Trump dismissed him. I guess he found out he wasn't going to get a cut of that uh, $3 trillion because all Trump cares about is money, which is why he takes no salary. Last one. Trump has potentially committed a number of felonies, and a felon simply can't sit in the Oval Office. I can't believe I even have to state that. From his admitted sexual assaults to whatever he's hiding and the tax returns to possibly evading taxes to committing fraud with Trump U to his long list of conflicts and interests, the chances of us to suffer through this impeachment is just too much to bear. The key word in that would obviously be potentially, and everyone knows he's talking about the infamous grabber by the recording, which was quite literally Trump saying, hey, when you have lots of money, women let you do whatever you want to them, which is true. And you can tell just by, actually, I'm just going to go through this recording because we got we to gotta go through this clip because it's just such a... You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. <laughs> I can do anything. Yeah, it's so obvious they're just going back and forth with each other. Notice how Trump sets it up. He waits for him to start laughing, and then he says the extreme example, you know, you can grab him by the to just make him laugh harder. They're just bullshitting with each other, and everyone knows it. Every guy has had conversations like this, and then there's always the ones that say, no, I would never talk about a woman like this. Like, okay, everyone knows you're lying, you aren't better than us, and you aren't going to get laid pretending to be an ally. He says Trump's committed felonies by not paying taxes. I like that they bring that up. Like, Trump doesn't pay any taxes. And do you know how businesses work? Legally speaking, there's no other practical purpose of establishing an entity like a corporation other than tax purposes and asset protection. That's basically it. Anyone who's taken Business 101 or attended Trump University knows this. Trump University, that's another thing that they like to get him for. It's a fake university. You're reading too deep into it, my guy. It was never marketed as a university. It was a seminar. Calling it Trump University was just a clever name for it. No one thought that they were going to be dorming there. I've read a lot into real estate and portfolio investing, and everyone knows that those seminars are a scam. Everyone knows that. The people that go there to those seminars, they think that there's some big secret that they're going to learn, and once they learn it, they'll be able to make millions of dollars. Like, okay, have fun with that. 
Trump isn't the first guy to get pinched for these uh, get rich quick type seminars. And yeah, of course it was BS, but the people who are willing to pay that much money to go to a seminar, they could have spent 10% of that on books from Amazon that would actually teach them, but they didn't want to do that. They wanted to pay for the Trump branded education for less time consuming endeavor than they thought uh, you know would make them millions of dollars. And of course it didn't deliver, but the fact that they expected it to was kind of silly. And I'm not defending Trump for this. I really don't have a ton of respect for get rich quick salesmen. I'm just saying that no one forced them to pay for it. They chose to. Did the advertising mislead them because they weren't able to spend $1,500 on a seminar and, and instantly make a million dollars? I mean, I guess so. And it's funny because just because the people got refunded doesn't mean that they learned anything. They're probably just going to go to a find and flip seminar now. Anyways, there you have it. You can now defend against the inevitable onslaught against our president by your leftist relatives. And after you're done defending, feel free to remind them that Trump has crippled ISIS, cut taxes, and achieved the highest level of consumer confidence in 17 years and made the U.S. economy the most competitive in the world for the first time in a decade, risen the GDP by 3% on average each quarter for the last 18 months. Dow hit 70 record highs just in 2017, workforce participation record highs, unemployment record lows, Hispanic and black unemployment record lows, and we got rid of the individual mandate from Barry. Trump economy is soaring. Everyone's lives have improved, but the press is still overwhelmingly negative against Trump. Who cares? Don't buy into it. No one actually does, which is why CNN pays so much to artificially inflate its viewer counts. America is becoming great again. I'm very thankful to Donald Trump, but I'm also thankful for every patriot, you guys, that elected Trump, saw how the media was slandering him only to protect the Washington establishment, but still voted for him. In secret or not, we did this. This is our movement and Trump is our president. Things are absolutely beautiful. What a time to be alive. Happy Thanksgiving and I am thankful for every single one of you. Hey guys, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. You can click my face down there. It'll help you do that. Give this video a thumbs up and a comment. Also, forward this video to a conservative family member of yours that you think might be lacking in arguments or just project it during Thanksgiving dinner. Let the whole family watch it. Thank you so much for watching as always, and may God bless America, and happy Thanksgiving.